In continuum mechanics, the finite strain theory, also called large strain theory, or large deformation theory, deals with deformations in which both rotations and strains are arbitrarily large, i.e., invalidates the assumptions inherent in infinitesimal strain theory. In this case, the undeformed and deformed configurations of the continuum are significantly different and a clear distinction has to be made between them. This is commonly the case with elastomers, plastically deforming materials and other fluids and biological soft tissue. Displacement The displacement of a body has two components a rigid body displacement and a deformation. A rigid body displacement consists of a simultaneous translation and rotation of the body without changing its shape or size. A change in the configuration of a continuum body can be described by a displacement field. A displacement field is a vector field of all displacement vectors for all particles in the body which relates the deformed configuration with the undeformed configuration. Relative displacement between particles occurs if and only if deformation has occurred. If displacement occurs without deformation, then it is deemed a rigid body displacement. Material coordinates the displacement of particles indexed by variable I may be expressed as follows. The vector joining the positions of a particle in the undeformed configuration and deformed configuration is called the displacement vector, using in place of and in place of both of which are vectors from the origin of the coordinate system to each respective point. We have the Lagrangian description of the displacement vector, where is the unit vector that defines the basis of the spatial coordinate system. Expressed in terms of the material coordinates, the displacement field is the partial derivative of the displacement vector with respect to the material coordinates yields the material displacement gradient tensor. Thus we have, where is the deformation gradient tensor? Spatial coordinates in the Eulerian description, the vector joining the positions of a particle in the undeformed configuration and deformed configuration is called the displacement vector, where is the unit vector that defines the basis of the material coordinates system, expressed in terms of spatial coordinates, the displacement field is the partial derivative of the displacement vector with respect to the spatial coordinates yields the spatial displacement gradient tensor. Thus we have, relationship between the material and spatial coordinate systems are the direction cosines between the material and spatial coordinate systems with unit vectors and, respectively, Thus the relationship between and is then given by knowing that then combining the coordinate systems of deformed and undeformed configurations it is common to superimpose the coordinate systems for the deformed and undeformed configurations, which results in, and the direction cosines become Kronecker deltas, i.e., thus in material coordinates, the displacement may be expressed as and in spatial coordinates, the displacement may be expressed as deformation gradient tensor. The deformation gradient tensor is related to both the reference and current configuration, as seen by the unit vectors and, therefore it is a two-point tensor. Due to the assumption of continuity of, has the inverse, where is the spatial deformation gradient tensor? Then, by the implicit function theorem, the Jacobian determinant must be non-singular, i.e., the material deformation gradient tensor is a second-order tensor that represents the gradient of the mapping function or functional relation, which describes the motion of a continuum. The material deformation gradient tensor characterizes the local deformation at a material point with position vector, i.e., deformation at neighboring points. By transforming a material line element emanating from that point from the reference configuration to the current or deformed configuration, assuming continuity in the mapping function, i.e., differentiable function of in time, which implies that cracks and voids do not open or close during the deformation. Thus we have relative displacement vector consider a particle or material point with position vector in the undeformed configuration. 
After a displacement of the body, the new position of the particle indicated by in the new configuration is given by the vector position. The coordinate systems for the undeformed and deformed configuration can be superimposed for convenience. Consider now a material point neighboring, with position vector. In the deformed, configuration this particle has a new position given by the position vector. Assuming that the line segments and joining the particles and in both the undeformed and deformed, configuration, respectively, to be very small, then we can express them as an. Thus from figure 2 we have where is the relative displacement vector, which represents the relative displacement of with respect to in the deformed configuration. Taylor approximation for an infinitesimal element, and assuming continuity on the displacement field. It is possible to use a Taylor series expansion around point, neglecting higher order terms, to approximate the components of the relative displacement vector for the neighboring particle as thus. The previous equation can be written as time derivative of the deformation gradient calculations that involve the time-dependent deformation of a body often require a time derivative of the deformation gradient to be calculated. A geometrically consistent definition of such a derivative requires an excursion into differential geometry, but we avoid those issues in this article. The time derivative of is where is the velocity. The derivative on the right-hand side represents a material velocity gradient. It is common to convert that into a spatial gradient, i.e., where is the spatial velocity gradient. If the spatial velocity gradient is constant, the above equation can be solved exactly to give assuming that there are several methods of computing the exponential above. Related quantities often used in continuum mechanics are the rate of deformation tensor and the spin tensor defined, respectively, as the rate of deformation tensor gives the rate of stretching of line elements while the spin tensor indicates the rate of rotation or vorticity of the motion. Transformation of a surface in volume element to transform quantities that are defined with respect to areas in a deformed configuration to those relative to areas in a reference configuration, and vice versa, we use Nansen's relation, expressed as where is an area of a region in the deformed configuration, is the same area in the reference configuration, and is the outward normal to the area element in the current configuration while is the outward normal in the reference configuration is the deformation gradient, and the corresponding formula for the transformation of the volume element is polar decomposition of the deformation gradient tensor. The deformation gradient, like any second-order tensor, can be decomposed using the polar decomposition theorem into a product of two second-order tensors an orthogonal tensor and a positive definite symmetric tensor, i.e., where the tensor is a proper orthogonal tensor, i.e., and, representing a rotation, the tensor is the right stretch tensor, and the left stretch tensor. The terms right and left means that they are to the right and left of the rotation tensor, respectively, and are both positive definite, i.e., and, and symmetric tensors, i.e., and, of second order. This decomposition implies that the deformation of a line element in the undeformed configuration onto in the deformed configuration, i.e., may be obtained either by first stretching the element by, i.e., followed by a rotation, i.e., or equivalently, by applying a rigid rotation first, i.e., followed later by a stretching, i.e., due to the orthogonality of so that and have the same eigenvalues or principal stretches, but different eigenvectors or principal directions and, respectively, the principal directions are related by this polar decomposition as unique as is non-symmetric deformation tenses. Several rotation-independent deformation tenses are used in mechanics. In solid mechanics, the most popular of these are the right and left Cauchy green deformation tenses. Since a pure rotation should not induce any stresses in a deformable body, it is often convenient to use rotation-independent measures of deformation in continuum mechanics, as a rotation followed by its inverse rotation leads to no change, e, be called the finger tensor.
However, that nomenclature is not universally accepted in applied mechanics. The left Cauchy Green or Finger deformation tensor reversing the order of multiplication in the formula for the right Green Cauchy deformation tensor leads to the left Cauchy Green deformation tensor, which is defined as the left Cauchy Green deformation tensor is often called the Finger deformation tensor, named after Joseph Finger. Invariants of are also used in the expressions for strain energy density functions. The conventional invariants are defined as where is the determinant of the deformation gradient. For nearly incompressible materials, a slightly different set of invariants is used. The Cauchy deformation tensor earlier in 1828, Augustin Louis Cauchy introduced a deformation tensor defined as the inverse of the left Cauchy Green deformation tensor. This tensor has also been called the Piola tensor and the finger tensor in the rheology and fluid dynamics literature. Spectral representation If there are three distinct principal stretches, the spectral decompositions of an is given by furthermore. Observe that therefore the uniqueness of the spectral decomposition also implies that the left stretch is called the material stretch tensor. The effect of acting on is to stretch the vector by and to rotate it to the new orientation, i.e., in a similar vein, derivatives of stretch derivatives of the stretch with respect to the right Cauchy Green deformation tensor are used to derive the stress strain relations of many solids, particularly hyperelastic materials. These derivatives are and follow from the observations that physical interpretation of deformation tenses let be a Cartesian coordinate system defined on the undeformed body and let be another system defined on the deformed body. Let a curve in the undeformed body be parametrized using its image in the deformed body is. The undeformed length of the curve is given by after deformation. The length becomes note that the right Cauchy Green deformation tensor is defined as hence, which indicates that changes in length are characterized by finite strain tenses. The concept of strain is used to evaluate how much a given displacement differs locally from a rigid body displacement. One of such strains for large deformations is the Lagrangian finite strain tensor, also called the green Lagrangian strain tensor or green street venant strain tensor, defined as or as a function of the displacement gradient tensor or the green Lagrangian strain tensor is a measure of how much differs from the Eulerian Almanzi finite strain tensor, a reference to the deformed configuration, i.e., Eulerian description, is defined as or as a function of the displacement gradients. We have Seth Hill family of generalized strain tensors B, R, Seth from the Indian Institute of Technology. Karagpur was the first to show that the Green and Almanzi strain tensors are special cases of a more general strain measure. The idea was further expanded upon by Rodney Hill in 1968. The Seth Hill family of strain measures can be expressed as for different values of we have. The second order approximation of these tenses is where is the infinitesimal strain tensor. Many other different definitions of tenses are admissible, provided that they all satisfy the conditions that vanishes for all rigid body motions. The dependence of on the displacement gradient tensor is continuous, continuously differentiable and monotonic. It is also desired that reduces to the infinitesimal strain tensor as the norm. An example is the set of tenses which do not belong to the Seth Hill class, but have the same second-order approximation as the Seth Hill measures it for any value of stretch ratio. The stretch ratio is a measure of the extensional or normal strain of a differential line element which can be defined at either the undeformed configuration or the deformed configuration. The stretch ratio for the differential element in the direction of the unit vector at the material point in the undeformed configuration is defined as where is the deformed magnitude of the differential element. Similarly, the stretch ratio for the differential element in the direction of the unit vector at the material point in the deformed configuration is defined as the normal strain in any direction can be expressed as a function of the stretch ratio.
This equation implies that the normal strain is zero, i.e., no deformation, when the stretch is equal to unity. Some materials, such as elastometers can sustain stretch ratios of 3 or 4 before they fail, whereas traditional engineering materials, such as concrete or steel, fail at much lower stretch ratios, perhaps of the order of 1.001 physical interpretation of the finite strain tensor. The diagonal components of the Lagrangian finite strain tensor are related to the normal strain, e.g., where is the normal strain or engineering strain in the direction. The off diagonal components of the Lagrangian finite strain tensor are related to shear strain, e.g., where is the change in the angle between two line elements that were originally perpendicular with directions and, respectively, under certain circumstances, i.e., small displacements and small displacement rates. The components of the Lagrangian finite strain tensor may be approximated by the components of the infinitesimal strain tensor deformation tensors in curvilinear coordinates. A representation of deformation tensors in curvilinear coordinates is useful for many problems in continuum mechanics such as nonlinear shell theories and large plastic deformations. Let be a given deformation where the space is characterized by the coordinates. The tangent vector to the coordinate curve it is given by the three tangent vectors that form a basis. These vectors are related the reciprocal basis vectors by let us define a second order tensor field with components the Christoffel symbols of the first kind can be expressed as to see how the Christoffel symbols are related to the right Cauchy Green deformation tensor let us define two sets of bases the deformation gradient in curvilinear coordinates using the definition of the gradient of a vector field in curvilinear coordinates. The deformation gradient can be written as the right Cauchy Green tensor in curvilinear coordinates. The right Cauchy Green deformation tensor is given by if we express in terms of components with respect to the basis, we have therefore in the Christoffel symbol of the first kind may be written in the following form. Some relations between deformation measures and Christoffel symbols let us consider a one-to-one -one mapping from two and let us assume that there exist two positive definite symmetric second-order tensor fields and that satisfy then. Noting that and we have define hence define then define the Christoffel symbols of the second kind as then therefore the invertibility of the mapping implies that we can also formulate a similar result in terms of derivatives with respect to therefore compatibility conditions. The problem of compatibility in continuum mechanics involves the determination of allowable single-valued continuous fields on bodies. These allowable conditions leave the body without unphysical gaps or overlaps after a deformation. Most such conditions apply to simply connected bodies. Additional conditions are required for the internal boundaries of multiply connected bodies. Compatibility of the deformation gradient The necessary and sufficient conditions for the existence of a compatible field over a simply connected body A compatibility of the right Cauchy Green deformation tensor The necessary and sufficient conditions for the existence of a compatible field over a simply connected body A week can show these are the mixed components of the Riemann Christoffel curvature tensor. Therefore the necessary conditions for compatibility are that the Riemann Christoffel curvature of the deformation is zero. Compatibility of the left Cauchy Green deformation tensor No general sufficiency conditions are known for the left Cauchy Green deformation tensor in three dimensions. Compatibility conditions for two-dimensional fields have been found by Janet Bloom.